Part 14, the Tower of Babel. We see that the whole world is gathered together in the plains of Shinar under the leadership of one guy, Nimrod, whose name means we shall rebel. <laughs> like, what's going on in the parent's head when they name a child and say, you know what, we shall rebel. He's the guy. You know, let's name him that. And they are building this tall structure. Now, if you look at my earlier material, I used to say, well, you know, if their goal is to reach in the heaven, you know, it's kind of stupid. Why are you building it in the plains of Shinar? Why don't you get a head start and start building on a mountain or something? So I said, uh, well, they must have been, the top of the, the Tower of Babel must have been a stargate. Yeah, that's it. It was a stargate. And they were creating an interdimensional portal to go into heaven. And I was really dogmatic about that back then. Yep. Uh, I was wrong. Uh, Whatever was happening there, it's very interesting when you look there, it, and God's looking down, it sees what they're doing. They're trying to build this tower to reach into heaven. And he says, now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Ah, uh, that's pretty huge. That's a pretty huge statement right there. And then he goes down and confounds their language. Well, as I started doing research related to the topic that I discussed last night, I began to realize it actually was about height after all. I used to say it was not about height, you know, because I was into the Stargate thing, right? Then I started to realize, wait a minute, as I started looking at some of the stuff even that I published, my own materials that I had published and, and read right over, skimmed right over it, that it actually tells you, like in the Book of Jubilees, and they built it 40 and 3 years they were building this thing, a 43-year project. And its breadth was 203 bricks, and its height of a brick was the third of one. Its height amounted to 5,433 cubits and two palms, and the extent of one wall was 13 stades, and of the other, 30 stades. That's big. Um, note, 5,433 cubits is 8,150 feet. I found uh, in this book right here, Bible History of Old Testament, chapter 8, Alfred Edersheim. He said, Of the magnificence of Babel, the capital of the empire of Nimrod, the mighty hunter, it is difficult to convey an adequate conception without entering into details foreign to our purpose, but some idea of it may be formed from its extent, which according to the lowest computation covered no less than 100 square miles while the highest computation would make it over 200 square miles, the base of this building. So why did they have to find it? Uh, why did they do it in the plains of Shinar? They needed a place big enough for a 200 square mile base. <laughs> That's a big building. That's why they did it in the plains of Shinar. What were they planning to do? The book of Joshua goes into tremendous detail. I'm not going to read all this. Uh, just for the sake of time. But, you know, basically, it, in the highlighted part there, it says they imagine in their hearts to war against him and to ascend into heaven. Their plan wasn't just to reach into heaven. Hey, how you doing? They were going to go up there and take over. And they had divided themselves up into three camps. One camp was going to go in there and assault the angels. One's going to go in there, assault the throne room, and the other's going to go in there and take the throne and set Nimrod up as basically the king of everything. Their goal was to wipe out heaven and set up Nimrod as the king of the universe. Like, that was their goal. And this, this project took 43 years to build, and it, it would take people lots of time to just to get up the thing, you know, carry all the stones up there, and it got to the point where as the higher it got, if somebody fell off, nobody cared. But if they dropped a brick, everybody would mourn because all the work that went into trying to get that brick all the way up, <laughs> uh, that's how bad it got. Uh, and it continues right here. Uh, this is where it talks about them dividing into the camps, what they want to do there. Uh, and so, you know, in my first talk that I ever did publicly, Mythology and Coming Great Deception, I talked about how, you know, this guy was the king of the world at the time. The New World Order, there's nothing new about it. Nimrod tried to create a one world order without God. In fact, his, his goal was to kill God, according to these texts. And God looked down and, you know, he makes a statement, now whatever they imagine to do won't be restrained from them. I don't believe it was ever possible for them to kill God, but for them to possibly reach into heaven... Well, God made the statement, <laughs> you know, what they're trying to do uh, won't be restrained from them. So he confounds their language. And then everybody went away, and many scholars believe, and I agree, that there were 70 different languages, 70 different people groups went away from the Tower of Babel. And there were several hundred thousand people, I forget the exact number, uh, alive at the time, and those people groups went away speaking 70 different languages and 70 different people groups, all going away talking about the same guy, but now in different languages. And that's why many different uh, myths... Uh, there's a lot of synchron synchro uh, what's the word? synchronicity uh, in these characters. And so I came to believe that these may be some of the names that in various ancient cultures may trace back to Nimrod um, based on characteristics described about these characters. So we'll move to part 15. Nimrod versus Abraham and a cosmic chess match.
Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video presentation. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video, and share it on your favorite social media sites. There's a lot more to come, so stay tuned, and we'll see you back next time.